Hi, my name is Jeff. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to install Sigwin. Uh, Sigwin is a Unix slash Linux type environment for uh, Windows. It's good for programming, uh, good for a ton of stuff. I don't even pretend to know uh, even half of, of what this, this tool can do. Uh, but I'm going to be focusing more on how to get GCC compiler running on Unix on a Windows based machine for programming assignments and homework and whatever else for universities. Uh, so first we're going to go to Sigwin, www.sigwin.com and uh, once you get there uh, you want to click the install Sigwin now uh, for time sakes I've already downloaded it and it's on the desktops but you know if you click on install now it'll get the same result um, and obviously you want to run I'm running on Windows uh, Vista uh, you know this would also be done on XP and whatnot but the installation may vary slightly and it's a case in this user account control panel where you have to allow it uh, you might not necessarily see that in, in a Windows XP environment Okay, so uh, first step, you just hit next. Uh, you're going to install from the internet. Uh, you know, if you uh, wanted to download it without installing or just install from a local directory, you could certainly do that. Uh, but right now, we're going to install from the internet. Um, you're going to say, you know, what users are going to have access to this. Um, you know, you put all users uh, if you want install for the entire machine or just me if you're the only person who's going to be playing with this on this profile. Um, Unix and binary recommended, just leave that to be the same. Um, you know, desktop for your package. Um, you know, you can choose wherever you want. I'm going to choose, uh, um, um, you know, desktop. And asks you for how you're going to get to the internet. You just select whichever one applies to you. Uh, and what this is going to do now is it's going to select um, a mirror that you're going to install from. Uh, I'm going to just choose the first available one. But if you had a preferred mirror, you could do that one. Um, and it's going to download uh, all the stuff for this. And here in a moment, we should have access to all the uh, cool stuff that uh, you can download. I mean, by default, it gets a certain uh, subset for downloading, but you can uh, uh, expand upon every one. So I'm going to choose, um, you know, developer. And what I'm really looking for here is the uh, um, GCC compiler. So I'm going to scroll down here until I see GCC. Um, you know, G++. Um, what I'm looking for is the GCC core. And I'm going to choose this and you know make sure I select it. Um, and I'm going to see if there's anything else I need. I'm not really seeing anything. If you wanted a C compiler, um, you know, or C++ compiler, I'm going to take the C++ compiler too. Um, you know, you can do that if you're into Ada. You know, any of the other languages, you can do that. Um, and you could just choose all kinds of cool packages here. There's all kinds of packages you can do. That's one of the reasons why this tool is so awesome. So uh, just choose whichever ones you want and hit next. And what it'll do is it'll install it and uh, and run it uh, here. So it's take just a couple moments. Um, and for those of you who are Windows-based uh, people and you know and really want to learn a little bit about Unix-based command line. Um, this is going to be uh, a really nice tool for you because you can use commands like ls or you know pipe to more uh, things like that um, that use typical on a, a Unix based system and uh, uh, and you can't do in DOS so you know one of the things that I, when I was learning Unix this is how I first started getting started on it until I actually switched over to Unix based operating system altogether um, but anyway so this will take just a couple moments to install. Um, I'm going to fast forward here until the end of the install. Okay, so after the installation is complete, you'll get to this window. It is a rather large installation. It takes a little bit of uh, time to do. Um, also, just for uh, um, full disclosure, I did copy a uh, example C++ program onto the desktop that we'll be using in just a moment. Um, but so here we are. We just I I like to have an icon on the desktop and the start menu. This is just a matter of preference. You could do it if you'd like. Hit finish, and uh, um, away we go. So let's go ahead and close this out and uh, say it installed correctly. And for some reason, it looks like Vista didn't uh, put the icon there. So uh, we will look on uh, uh, Sigwin under the Start menu and then look for the Bash shell. Once you start this, um, 
you'll see a bunch of uh, installation start stuff happen and uh, you'll notice you're now at a bash shell just like you would be at a Unix based command line so you can do things like LS uh, or P uh, R D or sorry PWD for print working directory um, and you get the basic idea um, now that we have uh, some basic commands now we can start to play around a little bit uh, with a C++ program so I've already moved into my directory structure and if you go into your uh, uh, C uh, Sigwin file or sorry C colon Sigwin folder this is essentially your Unix command structure or your, your file structure uh, so I'm in there for my home directory and Jeff is uh, the name um, so I have the solution C++ file uh, and I can actually see it by just doing an LS here uh, that I've added in and uh, solution.c++ if I want to do GCC which is the compiler and then I use uh, uh, solution I can use tab completion here and the command for uh, specifying C++ is dash L S T D C++ uh, and then hit enter and what it'll do is it compiles it using C++ um, and I can actually go into um, a.exe now um, oops I should be able to do it this way um, and all I did is had the program you know count to 25 uh, so essentially that's how you uh, uh, install use and uh, compile with Sigwin uh, thanks uh, and if you have any questions please leave a um, comment to the video below uh, take care.